is pretty simple, really. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really what I want to talk about. It's just the temptation to make all of this so unbelievably complex. Mm -hmm. When I, and when I say all of this, uh, I mean this attempt, which we have to kind of seemingly do over and over to find out who we really are and mm -hmm. what we really are, mm -hmm. which is, you know, at the end of the day, pretty simple. But one of the reasons I enjoy doing these dialogues is to disabuse myself of the complexity mm -hmm. that then comes up, yeah. right? Saying, ah, well, you know, it's true that yeah. up to now yeah. it's pr proven the case that all I need to do is just get still. Mm -hmm. But now... <laughs> Now there's this new temptation, challenge, obstacle, and so forth. Uh, so I was wondering what your own experience was about that. If you know, after the simplicity, then the complexity. Well, I mean, for me, it's it is very simple, as you say. Um, there's a lot of discussions going on in different forums that I'm part of about what is enlightenment. What is what does awakening look like, or the horrible E word, enlightenment, which I think is a should just be struck from the language. Uh, and a simple definition would be, for me, we touched on it before, but just can you sit by yourself in a room alone and be okay with what's there? Can you basically like what you see when you're just being still, alone, eyes closed, quiet? If you don't like it, if you're running someplace else, or if you want something else, or there's something wrong with that, or you wish something else was happening, then, you know, you're not at ease. You're craving something else. If you, if you don't have craving, attachment, you don't have suffering. That's easy to say and sometimes hard to get to, but if you can easily look at that and judge it. So, yeah, I think the whole thing gets simple. I think the brain runs back out again. Uh, our brains are trained because of all of our education to run back out in into complexity. We like complexity. Uh, we believe the uh, that's where we make our money. It isn't. <laughs> our, our insight really comes from getting information, ingesting it, and then having it processed offline and coming up with some insightful perspective from our learning. But uh, the brain runs there. The ego runs there and says, "Hey, look, I know this is this is un, this is not cool here. This is this quietness, this stillness thing is not okay." How about this complicated problem over here? This big issue I've got in my life. Ooh, labyrinth. Or yeah, solving this problem and that problem, and then stories begin. So I, I think it, it gets simple and then complex because you keep getting dragged into it by the brain, ego, I, whatever word you want to use, running, running back into a place where it feels secure, back into confusion and disorder and complexity, when in fact the answer is really, really simple. And the more time you watch that dance going back and forth, this arising and passing away, as some of the scriptures talk about it, the more you see that happening. You say, well, I don't need to keep running out there because it's so much better over here. And eventually the brain learns that. The brain says, hey, this is so much cooler than this thing over here. So I'll just stay here if you don't mind. And eventually it wears out this and it becomes more and more over here and it really ends up residing in this still place. Maybe that can be a useful heuristic then in the sense that you know, we can ask ourselves, like, does it need to be this complex? In other words, when, you know, like a lot of times we go through some spiritual path uh, and we say, okay, well, you know, now I'm going to this level and now I'm going to get this initiation and I'm going to go hear this teacher or I'm going to study with this teacher or I'm going to try this practice. And that's all, you know, beautiful. That's opening a lot of doors, uh, uh, you know, as I remember you telling me about when I was kind of looking at every single spiritual tradition right. in the planet. There is something beautiful about that, but what's beautiful about it is the way in which they all converge mm -hmm. on a simplicity. Mm -hmm. And that when we start getting involved in complexifying and in finding special arcane angles that are going to be the way, capital W, mm -hmm. that we're really going to break through then we might have a heuristic where we say, um, is it really that complicated? Mm -hmm. How could it possibly be that complicated when it's our birthright, when it's what's already there, mm -hmm. when it's what we're just getting in the way of? So using this heuristic of saying, you know, is this complexity to be trusted might help counteract, you know, what I recognize as our love of complexity. I mean, when I first had a big opening that I recognized 
after my experiences with ayahuasca, mm -hmm. one of the things that I had the biggest problem with was it can't possibly be, be this, this simple. simple because my mind <clears throat> was overly intellectualizing everything and was convinced mm -hmm. that the only truth that could be found was, you know, radically complicated and you had to bring Hegel together with high-end topology and complexity theory and nonlinear dynamics and yeah. the evolution of the quantum mind as it instantiates itself through right. nanotechnology. And, like, that's all fun and cool and interesting, mm -hmm. and it, too, has that simple core to it. But what I was doing was having my mind chase yeah. some complexity because it couldn't yeah. face the simplicity. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of <clears throat> discussion going on about should you have levels or not? I'm not a fan of levels, as, as you know. The idea that I want a, I want a yellow belt and you've got a green belt and he's a yellow belt, a blue belt or a black belt or whatever, uh, that's very seductive. People love that. I mean, they want to be special. They want to be able to go to their parties or whatever and say, you know, I, I'm just, now I'm now a blue belt or oh, you know, first degree yeah, black belt. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I've really done a fantastic you work. You should have put that on your Facebook site. It's, you know. on, it's, on, <laughs> oh, okay, it's, it's all right. on right yeah, now. The book right. recently is up yeah. there. Um, so you get this building, and what you do is you were trained to do that. Yeah. Uh, Darwinianly, evolutionarily, we want to fit into a hierarchy. Uh -huh. And so it, we, this feeds that. We get, we get dopamine, we get, we get all kinds of support for working our way up the hierarchy. And the problem is, if you want to get simple, you build this massively complex, egoically structured uh, lattice. And you get to the, to the top of that, you're, you're a third degree black belt, that's a big part for many people, their identity. And so saying, okay, we're going to get rid of this third degree black belt. D no, <laughs> don't take away a third degree black belt. That's who I am. And it is who they are. Well, they're still badass, whether or not yeah. they have them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the point is, is that's their identity. And you've, you've taken the very thing you need to deconstruct to yeah. get simple and made it really elegantly uh, reinforced. Yeah. And this is Darwinianly supported. So you've got this huge ego that now is trying to make the next step to transcendence, and they have to let go of the eye. Yeah. Very difficult. I work with a lot of those people, and it's very difficult in that space. If you come up this ladder to try to make that transition over to, I want to go non-dual. It's very hard for them. So so it brings to mind a kind of Yogi Berraism, in other words, that you can't get there, you're too advanced. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard it. You've love, made too I, much progress, yeah. I'm sorry, you'll never yeah. be enlightened. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love yoga. I hadn't heard that one. It's a good one, though. And I think that does happen. Oh, I just made it up. It's not actually a good one. I'm just channeling him. No, whatever, you channel the book. Yeah. But th that's the whole idea. Yeah. You know, you're too advanced. And because yeah. you're too advanced, you will yeah. never get simple. Yeah. You've got to let go of all that structure that you've invested so much energy in, and so much of your ego is built around this, well, I really am a, a very advanced person. Well, what it brings to mind is uh, some research that was done, I believe back in the 1950s. It was um, reported in an amazing book by this guy, uh, Ronald Siegel, called The Fourth Drive. It was one of the early books about uh, the role of psychedelics in the uh, evolution of human and animal mm -hmm. uh, consciousness. Interesting guy. And he pointed to some research, I believe it was from the 50s, uh, when, and I think it was chimps, was primates for sure, they gave them DMT, they smoked dimethyltryptamine, a very potent mm -hmm. psychedelic, ecodelic. And uh, what they found was that wherever any, uh, any of the chimps were in the hierarchy, maybe uh, they dealt better with the DMT, right? If they were low down in the mm. hierarchy... Oh, yeah. They would freak out and, you know, evince all kinds of symptoms. Right. But the higher up in the hierarchy they were in terms of what, you know, the primatologists called alpha, right. the less they dealt with it. And if you meditate on that for a minute, it becomes clear that if, you know, one, if one reflects on psychedelic experiences, I know you're a perpetual virgin on that, but you realize that what it's testing for is, are you going to attach to something? Right. If you attach to something, you're going to suffer. Yeah. So what it points to is that if you really want to go nth degree mm -hmm. black belt and transcend mm -hmm. is that you have to let go of everything. Mm -hmm. And that in a way, the psychedelics in this primate study context were a kind of measurement, a metric mm -hmm. of how far have you let go of everything. To truly be alpha, we tend to think that alpha means like, you know, I'm going to puff myself up mm -hmm. and be on steroids and yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada. But in this context, to really transcend hierarchy itself, mm -hmm. 
means letting go, letting go. of any attachment whatsoever. Yeah. And this is, again, to loop it back, pretty simple and is yeah. the core of every spiritual tradition that I'm aware of. But right? the, the, yeah. the whole thing of, of complete letting go is what what makes the statistics so low for fully transcending. Because people say, oh yeah, I'll let go of my, you know, watermelon in, in <laughs> at Christmas. But, but you say, okay, will you let go of everything? When you come right down to it, it's a very simple question. Yeah. But it's very hard to do. And, and that's what, what makes the statistics so low on fully transcending. It isn't anybody, you know, there's no special uh, te technique required. There's no special intelligence required. Anybody can do this if they're just willing to let go and persevere. That's all through. I mean, Ron Marshy stuff is very simple, but it just requires some place your willingness to let go of everything. And if you do, then it's pretty easy. But getting to that place, um, not many people want to go there. Well, it's interesting, though, because it brings up attention with the levels that you were talking about, which is if you look at these global spiritual traditions and the perennial philosophy or whatever label you want to hang on them, humility always is a fundamental attribute of any spiritual path. Mm -hmm. And even at first blush, you can see that there's going to be a tension between practices of humility and third-degree black belt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, like, it's going to make it harder and harder and harder to be humble. Right. Right? And so, I mean, I guess one way of looking at it is that you can get to third-degree black belt and then take on the cosmos itself and be humbled. Mm -hmm. And, and everyone will be as mm -hmm. soon as they take on the cosmos itself. But um, I do think it's something that, you know, because we have such a negative association, both with let, surrender, which is, you know, a synonym for letting go, mm -hmm. but also for humility. We think of humility, you know... Uh, Negatively. Yeah, as, uh, as something is like someone's been beaten up too much and put inside their locker, and so they've been humiliated. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, humility is a beautiful, beautiful practice mm -hmm. that allows you to see what's right in front of you. Yeah. yeah. But it's just keep letting go, letting go, letting go. And even at the very first level of Maharaji's practice or non-dual inquiry, it's very useful. I mean, even if you don't want to surrender all the way or let go of everything or let go of all attachment, there's still enormous benefit all the way up, you know, along as far as you are willing to go. So uh, it isn't this n nothing or everything, it's really more and more and more and more and more and more. You feel better, as you know, all, all the way going along that path. You get lighter, you're less attached to things, you're not as heavily conflicted. Um, but it really comes down to how much can you let go. But what's interesting is that our narrative mind, you know, as we've discussed it, um, takes what seems to be pointers towards letting go. Mm -hmm and interprets them in t terms of the body. I mean, this is what, you know, as somebody who, in the deep past, had many suicidal thoughts mm. myself, I can now see that what those really were, were pointers to totally surrender. Mm -hmm. But instead of recognizing them as that, I said, oh, well, what it means is, you know, go do this drastic thing to my body. Right. And that's because I was identifying with my body and identifying right. as narratively with my body. But in this context, this utter humility and sense of loss associated with suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. can then be taken like a, almost like a slingshot. You know, we can mm -hmm. use that energy saying, are these really pointing towards suicide mm -hmm. or are they actually an allegory? for losing your egoic self. Mm -hmm. Because you can't lose your egoic self through suicide. Mm -hmm. right? It's the ultimate act of an egoic self in right. certain ways. Right. Right. Um, but it's really just in this moment that I'm recognizing that that's what it was. I, was I, I felt that I needed to surrender. And the only thing I understood about surrender was to surrender physically right. to the world. Mm -hmm. But I'm just hoping that maybe if somebody hears this, they'll say, oh, I recognize that. And that, and that what it really is, is not suicide. What it is, is surrender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the ego is in charge of the show at that level. And the ego believes it's not the problem. I mean, if you really say, who, who has this problem? Who, who wants to do this act? 
you can begin if you can grab it. It's very difficult at that time. If you can grab that and say, well, look, it's, you know, the body's not asking to be done away with. I mean, the ego is saying, the body's the problem. It's not me. And if you begin, you know, that's the last thing he wants to do would be deconstructed. Yeah. You can turn it around. It's not easy. Yeah. Turn it around and go, at that point, go back into the ego and say, well, just who is it that's wanting to do this thing? And try to un unravel that, depack that somehow to uh, get a clearer look at it. Begin to realize who, what the real problem is here. The body's not the problem. I mean, the ego is the problem.